Warning, the following program contains scenes of death. When they found the pretty 18-year-old, her body had been cut up and placed in two separate suitcases. With her head and her arms and her feet in one of those suitcases, with the rest of her, I guess, in the second suitcase. An opportunistic citizen had found the suitcases in a ditch next to a country road. And I guess they figured they'd hit pay dirt. <laughs> I guess they did. At first, there were no visible signs of how the teenager had been killed. Well, except she'd been cut up. But they were able to establish she'd had sex before she died. I wonder how they know that. Pamela's funeral was well turned out, held in Rome. She was a popular girl, and of course, the case had received a lot of publicity and that helped, but there was a genuine outreach, a sadness, and dare I say, a celebration of her life, no matter how brief that life had been. This is the man that killed Pamela. Chopped her up, and gave her such an undignified end. And as if to add some sort of sick joke to the crime, his name is Innocent Asagali. Something that couldn't be further from the truth. But now I feel it's time to address what I believe many know as the pink elephant in the room. Asagali is a Nigerian migrant. Now I know that that might not be popular in some quarters, me saying that, because I have to keep the community safe. But I still feel it's something that needs to be put out there, which so many others seem to leave out of the story. would prove to be unsettling for several reasons. Most notably, the teenager's organs had been removed, cut out with a surgeon's precision. It also appeared that she'd had intercourse with two individuals with that number possibly increasing to five. There was semen found in the mouth of her decapitated head, which was believed to have occurred after the head was removed. The bruising on the face suggested that the teenager had been severely beaten. It is of this coroner's opinion that the organs had been removed for ritualistic purposes. And although the exact cause of death could not be established, the teen had been stabbed twice in the stomach. In high school, like most teenagers, Pamela became wild. And she started dating a Romanian man who was in his 20s, who dealt drugs. And he got her hooked on heroin. Pamela's parents had done everything they could to discourage the relationship but they failed. It was later discovered that he'd attempted to prostitute her out on the streets if she wanted to receive the drugs that she craved. With the parents now fearing for their daughter's well-being, they formed an intervention and put their daughter in a rehab. Machiatra was known as a medieval town whose walls were built to protect it from invaders. Officially formed as a municipality in 1138, overlooking the Adriatic Sea. What better place for Pamela's parents to hide her away and protect her, the same way it once shielded the city from invaders. By all accounts, Asagali was a real ladies' man. Bragged about how he liked to bang up white girls. I mean, what girl can resist a guy who just got off the banana boat? When they stuck him in Machiatra, they figured the clean sea air and the friendly people would help him integrate well. And he was entered into a migrant adjustment program and given an allowance to spend and clothes and a home to live in. But you weren't gonna oppress those white girls with a migrant allowance. So he dropped out after a couple of months, started selling drugs. He was now officially an illegal. Pamela had now spent several weeks in the rehab center in the hills of Machiatra overlooking the ocean. Fresh food, clean air, 
living a life of comfort away from the temptations of the city. But I guess Pamela had had enough because she had a hunger. And when you got a hunger, you You gotta gotta feed. feed. And her death clock was now ticking. That figure was around 9.30 at night that Pamela snuck out of her bedroom window on the first floor without a winter jacket in the freezing conditions to school. The only problem was she had no money. She ended up in an area called Diaz Gardens, known for its drugs, where the illegals were known to ply their trade. And it was there that she encountered two men and asked them if they had heroin. But they told her they were only selling weed but they knew someone who could get her some, and they would take her there. She willingly obliged them. And to say that the two men were opportunists would be an understatement. The walk to Pamela's final destination would be about 20 minutes in the cold Italian air, where she promised the men, although she had no money, she could pay them with sex. Five months legal into her 18th birthday, now clean for two months, she was looking good. When they arrived at Azagali's apartment, by all three of the men's testimonies, they smoked weed while Pamela shot up with heroin. And then she had sex with all three men, throwing her pearls before swine. The men claimed that it was just after midnight and all four of them were in bed, that Pamela would start demanding more heroin and when she wouldn't get it, she started freaking out and attacking them. And Asagali took a knife and stabbed her twice in the stomach. Believing she was dead, they started cutting up her body to dispose of it. It was after they had cut off both of her arms that she woke up and started screaming, to which they started promptly stomping on her face. And although she wasn't dead, continued cutting her up into pieces. It was from there They put her into two separate suitcases where Asagali called a cab and he took those two suitcases and he dumped them about 15 minutes from the town. And then they were found the very next day. And when it hit the news, a cab driver came forward and said he remembered taking a Nigerian with two suitcases to the very same spot that they found that body. And that individual was innocent Nasagari.
says no more